Once Human is a new weird open world survival game set in a supernatural post-apocalyptic environment. While it is primarily a multiplayer third-person survival game, Once Human also has elements of stealthy melee combat, puzzle solving, and an in-depth narrative. And while this game shares many similarities to the MMO genre, such as a guild system, an open world where I constantly saw and interacted with other players, and challenging group content, I hesitate to call Once Human an MMO since the developers themselves don't call it an MMO. Recently, I was able to participate in a 5-day closed beta session where I was able to learn more about the game firsthand. While there were two server options, one for PvE and one for PvP, I decided to take the PvE route since this was my first experience with the game. So everything in this video will be from the perspective of a PvE server. If anyone who is watching played on the PvP server, please feel free to note any differences between the servers in the comments down below. So as we load into the game, we get a nice cinematic, and then off to character customization. The character customizer starts with 6 presets, but the customization options are actually pretty robust. From hairline to facial bone structures, this almost feels like a Korean MMO with a level of changeable detail. I spent about 5 minutes trying to make my character look like Tom Cruise before I finished up and hopped into the game. One more short cutscene of our character waking up from a nightmare about a butterfly girl, and we're in the game. Pick up a nice machete in the next room over, and we're introduced to V, who is some kind of spirit demon bird that acts as our guide throughout the game. V tells us that we're in a test and that we need to escape this bunker that we've woken up in. Before moving on, the game prompts me to check my inventory, so I open my backpack and find my equipped gear the fashion tab, which is this game's cosmetic system, and the expressions wheel. The emotes in this game are actually pretty high quality. After a bit of exploring, I come across a door and open it to reveal my first enemy, a deviant. The melee combat in Once Human is action-based, so whichever direction I point and click, that's the direction my character swings. There are critical strikes and weak point damage, which definitely comes in handy during boss fights. After a few swings of my machete, the enemies are handled, and I learn that if I press control, I can actually dodge roll. Unlike some other games, there doesn't appear to be any fatigue or limit to the amount of times I can roll, so this will become a very useful evasive maneuver later down the road. The tutorial points me in the direction of some documents, which provide the code to access the next area. 0728 and I proceed onwards. I really enjoy the puzzle solving aspect of the game, even though this particular one is extremely simple because it's in the tutorial. Later in the game, I continuously came across these types of puzzles that unlocked doors, showed me a map to some treasure, or just provided some additional loot. In the next area, I'm greeted by V, my talking spirit bird guide, and he informs me that we're actually in a rift space, outside of reality. He sends me on my next quest to secure an object that will allow me to return to the real world, and we're off. The quest tracking system is quite good. The objectives are shown clearly on the map and I'm easily able to tell what I need to do next. The setting, the music, the ambient noises are so eerie, and the art style and attention to detail in the world really helped me to immerse myself in this environment. After completing the first half of the quest objective, I'm rewarded with my first gun. It's just a pistol, but it's much better than the close range machete that I'd been working with. While holding right click allows for third person aiming, I later learned that you can tap right click to change into first person mode, and this was particularly helpful for sniping. It's also very easy to cycle through weapons using the scroll wheel whenever enemies enter melee range. I then stumbled upon the extremely useful backstab attack. Whenever you're crouched behind a normal enemy, you're able to sneak up behind them and perform a one shot stealth kill. I I really enjoyed using this stealth method of killing whenever I felt like an area was overpopulated, or if I was running low on bullets. As I explored the environment, I became curious about this odd stack of floating cars, and I wondered if I could climb to the top of the pile. Not only was I successful in my parkour attempt, but I was also rewarded with a nice bit of lore at the top of the heap. Throughout the game, I came across several of these piles of cars, which turned out to be speedrun challenges, where if I beat the timer, I was rewarded with some nice loot. I really enjoyed these little mini-games sprinkled throughout the world. After progressing into the next area, my character puts on a special backpack, and I'm transported to a different rift space. V tells me that my cool new backpack is called a cradle. He informs me that I'm actually dead, and that the cradle can return me to the material world. After this brief conversation, the tutorial teaches me about space-time, an alternative reality mode that allows my character to see additional NPCs and objects in the space-time realm, but that using space-time will make my character lose sanity over time. We'll talk more about the survival game features of hunger, thirst, and sanity a little bit later. As I approach the next quest marker, I'm given a message that a ripple in space-time has been detected nearby. This is my cue to enter space-time mode to find the object or NPC in space-time. This feature will be used throughout the game to find all kinds of other NPCs and hidden objects. 
As I enter space-time, I'm able to interact with a new NPC who progresses the storyline. As I fight the next pack of mobs, the game tells me about the sanity bar. Sanity is lost slowly over time whenever I enter space-time mode, and sanity is also reduced whenever my character takes damage from deviants. This is important because reducing sanity also reduces my character's maximum HP, which is represented as this purple bar growing into my character's HP bar. There are certain items and medicine that can restore sanity, but when your health bar reaches 50% sanity, you're actually given a buff called a whim. At this point, I had a whim called Marathon, which increased my physical damage by 30% periodically. Shortly after leaving space-time, I met with my first semi-challenging piece of content, fighting against an Ancient One. Ancient Ones are basically like demonic gods in this game, and as you progress through the game and the main story quest, you'll find several of them throughout your journey. Normally you'd want to fight an Ancient One with a group, as they're basically boss level difficulty, but the first two Ancient Ones that I faced were soloable due to them being a part of the tutorial. I don't want to spoil too much, but the final battle against the Ancient One during the tutorial is actually pretty epic. As I entered the final area of the tutorial, V informed me that the structure we're in is called a monolith, and that monoliths were created by humankind, and act as doorways between the physical world and the spirit realm. V tasks me with re-entering the material world and shutting down all of the other monoliths there. This is basically the main objective of the storyline going forward, and with that, I used the monolith to complete the single player tutorial and enter the shared open world of Once Human. After entering the server and rematerializing my character's body, the first thing that I experienced was a pretty significant drop in FPS. Now this could be due to several factors, including the game being in a beta state or my own personal hardware, but I'm going to assume that this was probably due to it being the first night of closed beta and everyone entering the same shared server all at the same time. As the night went on and I moved further away from this shared spawn point, the optimization really began to level out, and this was really the only bad experience that I had with lag during the beta. After a short cutscene, V tells me that during the transition from the spirit realm to the material world, all of my possessions were lost, and sure enough, when I check my backpack, none of the items that I obtained while in the tutorial are present. Good thing I didn't spend half an hour cutting down all those trees I saw. <laughs> After exiting the monolith, V tells me about memetics. This is basically the game's talent tree system, although you don't use them to gain any ability power. Memetics are strictly used to unlock additional crafting and gathering skills. In order to unlock memetics, you have to use, and yes, this is seriously what it's called in the game, meme points. You earn meme points in a variety of activities throughout the game. As I progressed through the storyline, did side quests, dailies, and whatever puzzles I found, meme points came pretty easy to me, and I felt like I always had enough to unlock whatever crafting skill I needed. I used my first meme point to learn camping, which completed the first task in my chapter 1 journey. Along with the main quests, side quests, and dailies, the journey chapters in Once Human act as an additional tutorial to help guide you through the certain gameplay elements that the game has to offer. Completing each journey task, as well as the journey chapter itself, rewards experience, currency, and materials, and is definitely worth doing. After getting out of the spawn area, the game starts to run a little smoother, and I find my first small puzzle. These floating black orbs can be found all over the map, and getting all of them in a certain location grants additional loot. As I said before, I really enjoyed discovering all of these little puzzles sprinkled throughout the game, as they provide a nice little minigame in between major events or quests. They also provide a good amount of currency, cosmetic items, and unique formulas for things such as furniture to decorate your territory. More on that later. With my new Speed Demon sunglasses, I'm ready to make camp. As with many survival games, since I don't have any tools, my character uses a rock to chop down some trees. This method is incredibly ineffective, only granting me two logs per swing. But towards the end of my time in the beta, I was able to craft tools that granted me about 20 logs per swing, so it was a nice sense of progression. While looting the surrounding area, my game alerts me to my hydration meter, which affects my character's movement speed. When hydration falls below 30%, my character is unable to sprint, and above 70 70%, my character will always have a movement speed buff. Good to know. My next task is to mine some gravel to get my camp up and running. Again, using a rock to mine ore is pretty ineffective, but my tools improve drastically as time goes on. Now that I have my logs and my gravel, I'm ready to create a camp. The campsite in Once Human acts as a movable respawn point, and also provides some ability to craft food, drink, and early game gear. While gathering some materials, my character's energy level drops, and the game informs me that energy affects healing and gathering. When my character's energy 
energy goes below 30%, gathering materials takes longer. And with high energy, my character gains an increase in maximum HP and damage dealt. So it's definitely a good idea to maintain high energy levels for these additional benefits. I use a few meme points to learn how to make a pickaxe for more efficient gathering, and after a bit more looting, I craft myself a nice set of starter weapons and some armor. After crafting a full set of gear, I learned about deviation points, which are basically additional puzzle minigames that exist all throughout the open world. After completing one of these deviation points, I decided to place my nexus, which allows me to build a territory. While a camp is a small makeshift respawn point, a territory allows the player to build to their heart's content. It's also the place where you can store all of your additional materials and create facilities for crafting. You're also able to use your territory for fast travel from anywhere on the map and to any previously discovered transportation towers. Over the 5 day closed beta period, I was able to play for about 40 total hours. Throughout the playtest, I was able to finish building my territory, I crafted a motorcycle, killed a couple of ancient one bosses, crafted a few new guns, and generally had a fun time exploring the world and progressing through the main quest. So let's talk about the pros and cons. Pros. The combat was very fluid and responsive. Between stealth melee killing, sniping, or using tactical weapons like grenades, everything felt as smooth as a AAA game. Exploration of the world is fun and rewarding. There are hundreds of points of interest on the map. Some of them are locations of quests, some of them, such as strongholds, have a set of objectives that you can complete for additional loot. Some of them are just loot farms, which is nice when you're running low on a specific material. And there are several puzzles, minigames, and secret stashes hidden all throughout this enormous map. Enemy diversity is pretty good. There are the deviants that you fight all throughout the game, there's corrupted wildlife such as alligators, wolves, and bears, there are human faction enemies such as the militant vulture gang and the creators of the monoliths, Rosetta, and the boss fights provide fun and interesting endpoints to each of the zones. The game has an amazing tutorial system, as well as a slew of in-game guides to help players learn about the various systems within the game. This was extremely useful for me, and I really appreciated all the information that was provided in-game. Cons. As stated previously, at the beginning of the playtest, there were very significant FPS and performance issues, but those issues seemed to be resolved as the test went on. Other than that, there were really only a few other minor things that bothered me, such as certain ladders not working, or my character taking damage from mobs during cutscenes, but I feel like these are just beta issues that can easily be ironed out before the full release of the game. One other thing that I would really like to see them implement is some kind of looking for group or queue system. As of the closed beta, the only way that I could find a group was to post in Discord or go around to other Twitch streams. Since boss fights are instanced, and being in a group is so much better than playing solo, I feel that it should almost be a requirement for this game to have some kind of system where I can click a button and either find another player who is trying to do the same content as me, or just be put in a group to complete group content. Any way to connect with other players in-game would make Once Human that much better. Concerns. Monetization. So anyone who has watched my stream before knows that I'm really against pay-to-win monetization. I feel like it kills some really great games and I hope that Once Human isn't the next victim. There is an object in the game called an S-Vessel, and these can be used to secure the full rewards from bosses. If you don't use an S-Vessel after killing a boss, you receive basic, or worse loot. I always had plenty of S-Vessels on hand, so I was always able to secure the higher quality loot from boss kills. But this was over a 40 hour period, in a game that didn't seem to have endgame content completely fleshed out yet. So my concern with this specific item is that it will be more rare in the real game, or that players will have to spend more of them in order to secure higher level boss loot. And if this is the case, and the best loot drops from bosses that people can run endlessly, then this gives incentive to put these items in a cash shop. I'm really hoping that this doesn't become the case, especially since the main draw of this game will be open world PvP and territorial domination. If people are able to purchase S vessels or really anything else from a cash shop, I feel like it will ruin the integrity of PvP in this otherwise extremely fun game. So as long as they don't do that, I think every everything else should be fine, but we're still waiting on the monetization policy for this game, so I just thought I'd bring it up as a concern before the game progresses too far into development. But yeah, that was my experience with the Once Human closed beta. I'm really looking forward to the next beta session and full release. I think that this game has a lot of potential. The gameplay loop and the core of the game is already there. The developers just need to fill the enormous map with more content, and maybe add a few quality of life improvements. I think that Once Human and Starry Studios have a bright future ahead of them, and I'm really appreciative for the opportunity to test out the game in this early stage. But what do you guys think? Were you able to play in the closed beta, or did you check out any streams during the playtest? Let me know what you thought of the game in the comments down below. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.